Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to a beer that is entirely responsible for my love of Scotch whiskey. And to be honest, it's not the only thing it's responsible for. This is also responsible for the most I've ever paid for a beer per milliliter anyway. And as you can see over here, I have the previous editions so we can compare them side by side. This is of course the 2023 edition of Innocent Guns Isla Scotch Whiskey Cask Beer. And I for one am very excited about it. In short, all this is, is a red ale slash scotch beer slash amber ale slash, to be honest, they keep changing the name of it but it's a, well, it's a ruby coloured beer aged in Laphroaig whiskey casks of one description or another. Now they do change this a bit year on year. As I said, over here, I've got the 2021 edition, I believe that is. This one at time of release was considered very premium, sold out very quickly. I ended up spending overs on this, which is why it was so expensive. It's a 7.4% amber scotch ale. And was it worth it? Mm, no, but yeah. We'll get into that in a minute. And then we have the 2022 last year's edition here. This one, as you can see, kind of the odd one out in terms of the design. It's a bit more subtle, it's a bit more basic, and that one did actually end up on the supermarket shelves, which, well, is interesting. But I put them back over to the side because right now it's all about the 2023 edition and it comes in this lovely box, as you can see, on the front, as with all of them, Innocent Gun Isla Whiskey Cask Beer. This one says double matured in Laphroaig first fill malt and port casks. Now, the first edition of this was just Laphroaig single malt cask. The second edition was Laphroaig quarter casks, which in theory get a little bit more flavour because of the size of the cask. And then, well, this one is totally different again. This is first fill malt and port cask. I'll be honest, whilst I do love my whiskey and I do do some videos on it, my whiskey terminology knowledge is not the best. First fill, I believe, means it's just the first time that that cask has been used for whiskey. So basically some whiskey went into a cask for the first time ever and then straight after that it was then gone into the beer so I would imagine that well on the one hand it's maybe going to have less whiskey intensity because there's been less whiskey in it for less time but on the flip side a lot more of those actual barrel notes will still be left in it because they've only been used once so yeah could be interesting and port casks basically means it's a port finish like they port finish a whiskey so that's, that's just port but I guess we'll find out. We'll get into the rest of what's on this box later though, but beautiful design on the front as you can see. Load of info on the back there, but yeah, nice little storage box. And then the bottle itself. These I'm always surprised by because they go all out with the artwork on these boxes and actually, well, the bottle itself, as you can see, is not all that exciting. It's just, well, yeah, Innocent Gun, Isla Whiskey Cask Beer, 7.4%, load of info on the back there, but that's not really what we want to know. We want to know, does it taste any good and how does it compare to the previous years? Of course, I'll be using my fanciest of glassware for this particular event because for me, this is a hype beer. It's not one that a lot of other people talk about, but in my mind, I see this drop and I'm like, yes, buying it, no questions asked. And yeah, I'm excited. Can you tell? Let's get this open then. into the glass it goes then and it is a very deep red this year it's, it's never been a light beer this but this one i reckon is a touch deeper it could be as a result of those port casks mentioned um otherwise it's it's got good clarity it's not a hazy beer at all it's um yeah very deep ruby red nice thick pretty much standard really head on it if i can show you up close but you get a better idea there. It looks nice. It looks like it's got some texture. No complaints so far. Oh, that aroma just brings me back. So a little bit of personal whiskey history here. I've never been a big fan of scotch, and that is because I've never really liked heavily peated whiskey. So you're probably thinking, it's even odder that I really like this beer, because Laphroaig is notorious for their heavily peated whiskey. That said, actually, when I tried it in the beer, I loved it. It didn't have the same effect on me that it does when it's just neat whiskey, and I could start to appreciate all those subtleties and tones. That led on to me seeking out whiskies with those qualities, but maybe not in such, well, unadulterated chaos as things like the Laphroaig regular whiskies do. Um, yeah, and it's really stemmed an absolute adoration of Scotch ever since. I tried it nearly two years ago now. So the aroma on this is instantly whiskey. That's like, there's no 
There's no question about it. You you immediately go there. You're immediately right, right. We're in. This is Scotch territory straight away. Some berries, some caramel, real depthy peat smoke. And one thing that I'm not getting. I say I'm not getting. I think it is in there. Very very tiny amount of this kind of saline sea salt sea spray thing that again Laphroaig whiskey is known for and that's what really tipped me over with that first bottle I just love that slightly salty savory experience transferred into a beer and now as a result a lot of whiskies that do that as well I'll be disappointed if it's not there in the flavor it is there in the aroma but it, you've got to dig for it really but yeah otherwise it smells like a whiskey infused beer which is kind of what it is so let's get on with it shall we Cheers. Oh, it's a wonderful day. I'll be honest, I'm filming this on a Monday night. It's not normally a night I'd go for a bougie beer like this, but uh, I'm filming some content ahead of a trip I'm going on, and otherwise I won't get these videos out. So I have to say, this is the most glamorous Monday I've had for a while. And that beer, it's just this almost odd balance of things that shouldn't quite work in a beer and somehow in this package is just spot on. So I said it looked like it had reasonable kind of consistency body to it. I think I've said this about all of these beers now. They are actually quite thin, especially for a 7.4 percenter, especially for something that's been double matured and, you know, it, they've gone to town on it, basically making something special. It is a little thin, but what that does is makes this big, rich, smoky experience oddly charming, refreshing and light all at the same time, which, well, it's not the usual way you go about balancing a beer, but in this particular occasion, I'm not offended by that. I think that is absolutely sublime. And again, I think as with the other two, it's actually very difficult to get across all of the flavors that are going on in one kind of single sip experience. It's undoubtedly got whiskey in there. I mentioned the red fruits and caramel on the nose. I think that's possibly coming from the port. There is a little bit of residual boozy fortified wine sweetness in there as well. But the finish, really, I don't remember it being quite like this before. I'm getting this really kind of clean, almost oatmeal-y, flapjack kind of sensation on the back end, which might not be what you want from this type of beer normally, but I'm absolutely loving it, to be honest. Right, quick top to bottom taste test so you can try and understand exactly what this beer is all about. So initially, light carbonation on the front of the tongue. It's not particularly sweet, not particularly bitter. Slight mineral quality to it, but other than that, it's reserved, let's say, right at the front there. And then, first half of the tongue, again, it still takes a little while to get going. It's soft, it's starting to introduce you to the idea of what's to come. It's smoky, it's barbecue, but it's subtle. It's like, you know, some honey glazed ribs at a distance kind of thing. It's just something enticing, something letting you know, something big is coming, but it's not quite there yet. And then, Quick as a flash, we're in there with big, intense, smoky, earthy, peated notes. They are, well, they're massive, to be honest. They just, there's no let up on them in that first interaction with them, really. And for most people, I think that first sip, you go, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this or not. But then, as it gets towards the back of the palate, the smoke softens off slightly. You start to get a few more berry notes again, almost certainly from that port cask. The booze starts to lift up a bit. So now you've got fire and heat together. It's kind of working, it kind of makes sense. And you start to get a hint of this kind of caramel syrup flapjacky thing that just sits throughout with a tiny, tiny sprinkling of sea salt. And it's just a seasoning in this one. It's nowhere near as strong, certainly as it was in the first one, um, which I'm a bit disappointed about maybe, but I can also understand that this is probably slightly more accessible a beer than the other two were. And the aftertaste is this weirdly pleasing, sweet smoke and a quintessentially Scotch whiskey drying of the palate that just makes you want to go back for some more. This is one of my favorite beers of the year and that is all I've got left of it, which, well, is, is quite sad, if I'm honest. So, let's take a quick look at this box and bottle. On the back of the box, it says, when original brewing meets uncompromised distilling, you get a beer as distinctive as this. A distinctive it certainly is. For our third collaboration with our friends on Isla Lafroig, we've brewed a red beer and matured it in casks emptied of their famed 10-year-old single malt before finishing it in port casks 
Layers of flavour, intensity and the uncompromising spirit of Isla come together in this truly original beer. Have I been saying Isla right this video? In my first video I said it wrong all the way through and called it Islay and as a result was one of my most commented on videos ever because people like to tell you that you're wrong. But hopefully I've learnt my lesson now. And it goes on to say, and in the spirit of collaboration, we've partnered with another Scottish original, artist Scott Nysmith, inspired by the stirring Isla landscape, the rugged, beautiful atmosphere and coastlines he has created a suitably different and inspiring design for this limited edition beer. They're talking about the packaging on this box. It is absolutely gorgeous, as you can probably tell. And finally, it says, this uncompromising brew is for the true originals out there. I don't know about that. I think anyone can buy it, to be honest. I don't know how limited edition this batch is gonna be, whether it'll make it into the supermarket or not, but hey, it is how it is. What's my thought on this compared to the other two, though, which is ultimately what some people want to know if you've had the previous ones and are debating whether it's worth buying this one. In my mind, that original beer will struggle to be beaten, for me, anyway. However, what I will say is I think this beer, the 2023, is actually a bit more interesting, is a bit more premium than the 2022 version was. And I think for a lot of people, this one might be a bit more accessible, a bit easier to get into in terms of the sweetness and the smoke complexity and that sort of thing than either of the two before it. So yeah, it's definitely not a disappointment. I love it very much and I'm slightly sad that that's all I've got left. But as you've probably guessed, I do have another one because I'm accruing a collection of these and at some point in the future we'll do a mass tasting between all of them to work out, well, which is the best one. I'm kind of waiting on this and going to say they're not doing anymore and then I'll break them all open. But until then, that one's going to stay out of the way so I'm not tempted to drink it. And that really is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you will be so kind and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.